Are you record right now just let me know. Are you recording it if I just talk this way? Okay. So if we're looking at you're looking at the commission to look at diversity, looking at from women and minorities. We also have to look at going forward with the changing demographics and understanding that this is an issue coming up. But for the military, here's the bigger issue about this, and I really need to stress this with you. Who makes most of your force? White guys. Enlisted. Enlisted white guys. Who have been deployed several times. Whose children, these boys, have seen that. Traditionally, recruitment has come up because it's been family generation handed down. What will happen with our numbers? They're going to go down, and we're going to be curtained in a few years. Number two, what's going on is the changing. How many of you ever go to the IT SEC conference? The IT SEC conference is down in Orlando. It's every year. It's the International Technology Simulation Education Conference. Every single military force from around the world, including ours, is there. I go every year because I want to see who's showing up. Which of the young people showing up because we're right that in terms of technology. The challenge is if we're talking about women and minorities, we need to make sure that our women and minorities are showing up at that conference because that's the future of our force. Knowing how to use biases, knowing how to use simulation, knowing how to use computers. <clears throat> Next slide. So this is Working Mother Magazine, um, Working Mother Media, the, the people who also created Diversity past practices did a huge resource, a research about multicultural women moving up to senior ranks. When they did the research, they thought that when we talk about multicultural women at senior ranks, what we would find out that it was because there were people of color supporting each other. They thought that it was going to be women sponsoring each other. The research actually played out that 40% of multicultural women say the most important career related developmental relationship was with a Caucasian man. That doesn't mean that the others weren't there, but the numbers weren't there. 23%, 20% for women, helping women. But 40% of Caucasian men. We need to know that if we're increasing that, we have to make sure that we're engaged. Is that correct? Say yay. Yeah. Next slide, please. I know that you like that one. not 
exist. Let me say that for the tape. I am not saying that white privilege doesn't exist. What I am saying is that what we've done is deny the individual characteristics, the individual behaviors, beliefs of the white guys surrounding us. If you are not a military association right now, and you are not in uniform, I would ask every guy that's wearing a pair of khaki pants to stand up. And we get a lot of guys standing up with khaki pants. Most of them would have blue shirts. And everybody would think that they're all wearing the same thing. Is that correct? They're uniform. I got into this business because I used to be in menswear manufacturing. Never knew why God gave me that job. I traveled all around the country with 126 pairs of khaki pants. <coughs> Don't know why I went that way. Now I know. We had 126 different variations of khaki pants because men choose their pants particular to who they are. Some have big butts, some have a small butt, some like cuffs, some like not cuffs, some like polyester, some like cotton. And just as they are diversity in the khaki pants that they pick, they had to conform and lose who they are in the process. And sometimes in our training in the military, isn't that what basic does? Eliminate that. Become one. Let's have this feeling together. By the way, thank you so much because I transformed my son's life. Now he just hangs at everything before he didn't. <laughs> We have to understand who we're dealing with. We also have to understand if you that there are three things. White man privilege does exist, and it does exist, and there is diversity amongst white guys, but there are three things that white guys know. One, they know they are not diverse. Oh yes, we have a little words, but they don't know how they're diverse. We never talk about it for them. Two, they're responsible, this is what they've gotten out of trainings, they're, they're responsible for other people's choices. Let me repeat that. They have learned through diversity training, they are responsible for other people's choices. So, generals, admirals, did you have to make tough choices to move up rank? Was anybody, I mean, there might have been somebody there kicking your butt to get to the next level. Promote to potential, moving up rank. But we did have to go up. And I'll answer questions at, at the end, if that's okay with you, because I just want to get some information out there. But you're, you chose a path. You chose to step up. You chose to put out there. We have to remember that. But in diversity training, sometimes we, t we make it the white guy's responsibility. And I know I'm ticking off some people, but I call myself, <coughs> whatever I just was thinking that I wouldn't blame them. I call myself an uncomfortable strategist. I like to make people uncomfortable. I think that unless we make people uncomfortable, we can't grow. Unless you can climb that 10 foot thing, you know, and scale it up, climb over the wall and drop down, you have to be uncomfortable. Do you all remember when you've gone through P PT and you haven't done PT in a while? You remember all that? You made yourselves uncomfortable before you had your test, didn't you? Because now you were 50 and you didn't move the same way you did when you were 20. So we have to be willing to be uncomfortable. <coughs>